one's not facing me, so. It's going to give an artificial curve, so just be wary. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really weird. It's really going to mess up the Go AV pro, man. <laughs> um, For those of you that uh, don't know me, basically, I'm a, I'm a believer, obviously, in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and uh, Yeshua HaMashiach. So what I can tell you is this. Um, I would not have believed myself if I would if I would have been able to go back in time right now and go back 15 years and say, you're going to be in Lake Erie, you're going to be at a conference called Take on the World, and you're going to be talking about Flat Earth. <laughs> I would have definitely told myself, you are out of your mind. You look like me. You're a lot older than me, but you look, you're crazy. Get away from me. Uh, and then I probably would have, like, tased myself or something. <laughs> So this whole thing, this whole flat earth thing, um, when it first came up, uh, I was in the process, and I'll, for those of you who may hear some of what I said yesterday, and I'll repeat it, but just for the benefit of those that didn't get to hear this. I, um, I was working with Rob Skiba on C, and I had already started studying the, the Nephilim, the giants, what does this mean in scripture, how come I've never heard this, how come my church never talked about this, how, and even things like why is my church not talking about the Federal Reserve and centralized banking? And let's, you know, why are they not telling the truth about how things really work? Why? And there was this struggle. And so this this whole thing that we're talking about today is flat earth, the struggle and the solution. So the struggle is on different facets, it's on different levels with different things. Uh, and I'll go into flat earth in a second, but just so you know, I was into waking up somewhere around 2004. It was right after we went into Iraq. That things started really hitting home on me because, first of all, I've, I've, I've said this yesterday, I'm colorblind. There's, to me, in this world, there's no black, there's no white, there's no Asian, there's no yellow, there's no red, there's none of this. I don't believe that. That's, that's lunacy to me. I know that we're designed that way and made that way, but when it, at the end of the day, life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. And we all believe right. So there we go. Um, the thing that gets me on all of this and the struggle is, is waking up to the deception that I believe started well beyond our time. And it started in the garden, obviously. Somebody said yesterday, you know, what, what was, uh, was the other night? They said, what, uh, when did the deception start? How did it start? And I said, surely you will not die. Surely you will not die. And if we look in the scriptures, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And one of the things that Christ said is, don't be not of idle mind, right? Don't have an idle mind. He also said, go out and make what of men? What disciples? What does disciple mean? Follow or learn. So is there a point in time where we're supposed to stop and get comfortable and quit learning? No, we're supposed to continuously learn. Because how can you continuously teach if you stop learning? And a lot of the truths that we have to face today are uncomfortable truths. Let's be honest with ourselves. And usually it's when we look in the mirror. But when you start to look at the whole package of how, what, what we really don't know, and if there's been a plan all along by our adversary to do this, you also remember that he's been designed to do this, or he wouldn't be able to do it. God has to be ordaining all of this that's going on, especially in the end times. Or it wouldn't be happening. If he can, if he knows that before a sparrow falls out of the sky, if he knows every hair on some people's heads and some of us don't have hair, <laughs> then obviously if you're one of them too. There wasn't an attack on you. I'm, 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 I'm right behind it. There's one big away. <laughs> so I, what I can say is, is that when you really look at it for what it is, the game that's being played on us, God's okay with the game. But you have to, be, you have to be in it. You have to see it. And I believe that's the problem of 2012 that I've referred to. A lot of people used to say to me, do you believe in the Mayan thing? You know, back for December 21st, 2012. What do you think about that? And I used to say, well, the Mayans are so smart, where are they? If they have this all planned out, where are they? How come they were, how come God allowed them to be like to move here, move there, and scattered out? What happened? How many other discs were there that they had? We didn't, you know, it's like all this stuff. And all, why were people talking about the Mayan calendar? How come they weren't talking about Matthew 24? Earthquakes, diverse in diverse places, plagues, pestilences, you get it, right? So my whole thing is, is that 
when December 21st was, was came around and, and came and went, I was like, thank you, I don't have to hear that anymore. But I used to say to people, and my wife actually is the one who brought this to my attention, thank you, babe. Um, she showed me, she goes, how weird is this? Look at, look at what Proverbs 20, 12 is. And it's the hearing, hear, and the seeing I, the Lord, have made him both. So if, if your eyes and ears aren't working to see how real the world is, the what it is, and you're in a different reality, a reality that the adversary has built around us, it's kind of like the matrix. But if you're in that world, and that's your world, and that's what your world revolves around, the second that your eyes and ears start to work through the most high, that world does it. So the end of the world was 2012 for many people, or will be 2012 when they read Proverbs 2012 and understand that God's turned their eyes and their ears on And it becomes less of a struggle to see these things and to understand these things. And once again, you have wisdom because now you're getting it from the book, you're getting it from the armor. So the struggle for me was looking at life and looking at my past life and, and trying to figure out why, why am I looking and seeing these things and nobody else is seeing these things. And if you were here yesterday and you heard me talking about some of the, the things that I experienced, I did this long list, I just went back to things I can remember that were crucial in me understanding the, the spirituality realm around us, the principalities around us, and also guardian angels, I didn't get into that part. Because I should be dead a few times over, uh, just from a logic standpoint, with the things I've done. Um, so the struggle in all this, and now I'll, I'll get into flat earth, um, I do believe that the struggle in all this is that it's part of the strong delusion. I believe that it's part of the plan that can really wholeheartedly even deceive the very elect. And there are plenty of people that are godly men that can stand up and give great speeches and they can talk all day long and they can write books and they can do these things, but for some reason some of them cannot see certain things. And there are people, plenty of people just like myself, there are things I don't see yet. And Mike just said it right before he got done. Uh, Solomon said it, he said, none of us are going to have it all figured out. We're not going to know everything. Because he says it doesn't happen. All things will be revealed, it says, in the last days. It doesn't say everybody's going to know it. So we're, our job is to plant the seed in the struggle and to help try and find the solution for others. And the solution, I do believe, is the book, is our, is our Father, and in prayer. And the Holy Spirit will reveal things to us. And a lot of times we don't even realize the Holy Spirit's the one showing us these things. And we, we, we have to play this mad game of catch up. Like, what just happened? Like, flat earth. So, the struggle, and this is why I'm going to open this up, because I want you guys to be involved here. I think, it's, I think it would be wise to hear everybody. Uh, how many of you have tried explaining flat earth to somebody? Has it been easy? I'm writing all this down because I want to put this together. You guys are kind of like my little data. I, I'm, I'm collecting data because I've never had a room full of people where I'm, I have the mic. You know, I'm like the wedding singer. <laughs> I, have the, I have the mic. You will listen to me. I'm just kidding. Uh, if I can ask, what was, what's the biggest struggle you have trying to share this? I said, biggest struggle within talking about it? Yes. Um, Even bringing it up. Let's do that. Bringing it up. Well, me personally, I honestly don't have a problem bringing it up. I've gotten to the point where I just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can think whatever you, you want. Past it. You got past it. Yes, the, yeah. Uh, that wasn't too much mind. of a struggle for me personally because other things in my life, I've, I've kind of been a conspiracy theorist for some time. Those things were kind of a starting struggle. And then when this came along, it was like, oh, cool, just another thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Every um, job. Well, this one takes the cake. Probably the biggest struggle I have is like a lot of my friends that I graduated high school with. Uh, we're all still friends, and uh, they're all super intellectual. We all graduated really high in our class. Two of my friends graduated valedictorian, salutatorian. Uh, sure. one's, one's a neurosurgeon. One was going into uh, chemistry. One's into pharmacy. My other friend's a nurse. Like they're all like super smart people. So trying to bring this kind of stuff to them, of course, they're indoctrinated into this heliocentric model, and and they just dismiss it, you know, it's without investigation, you know. So um, trying to at least get them to think a little bit is probably the most difficult Outside struggle. The box. Right. Which is weird. Yeah, right. It does think outside the box, but never say think off off the uh, surface of the sphere. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of strange, but yeah. Is anybody can anybody relate to that? Does anybody else can add anything to that as far as their struggle? How did I know that was going to happen? That was weird. I told I told my wife last night. Watch, we'll have a power on. Like, you know, 
words have to all be good. <laughs> that was because of the lightning last night, the thunder and the rain. Power of the word. Yeah, that's still going. That's still going. That red light's still going. This one's still going. Yeah, they'll turn back on. Pretty well, I heard somebody clap twice upstairs, and then they had to clap twice. <laughs> so that's probably what just happened. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things. You just never know what you're going to get a take on the world. Somebody's out there. Lights out. Some old lady. I think it's the same lady who said, where's the beat? Um, I don't know if it was the same. Morgan Freeman? The Morgan Freeman that just happened. The lights did not go out. You guys remember when the lights went out at take on the world? They didn't. Yeah. Morgan Freeman came up. But give us your Morgan Freeman. Huh? Morgan Freeman? <laughs> I gotta get half half my headphones on. <laughs> Andy, let me tell you something. Uh, no, so okay, well the struggle then. So we all know there's a struggle in bringing it up because it's uncomfortable. Because we've all been, did, did any, was anybody born a flat earther and you knew it all along? I mean, is there anybody in here that never spun the globe and like, went, okay, I'm going to go to, ah, in the middle of the ocean. Do it again. <laughs> Earth. All right. Okay. Uh, no, I guess I think here's the thing with the struggle. Most of us struggle with pride. I think that's the biggest struggle. Because the second that you try and bring something up, whether it's flat earth or not, an uncomfortable truth is an uncomfortable truth. And the sad reality is, is that our culture has taught us that if somebody's going against the grain of society's norm, they're strange, they're weird. They're this, they're that, right? Isn't that why Yeshua was hung on the cross? For the most part. He was going against the grain of the world, right? So there you go. So just remember that. Find comfort in that. You're just talking about creation here. Now, the struggle that most people have is why does it matter? I get this every single time. Well, what's it matter? Does anybody have an answer for that? Truth. Truth matters. And what is true? The authority. Right? Over everything. Yeah. A lie can't hold up the truth. So when they say, what's the matter? And you say, well, the truth matters. And you get, well, but I don't see where that's a salvation issue. But my daughter, she doesn't accept widely, she accepts the creator. She does believe in the creator. So she, so the, yeah, the, the validation of the most high is there. Now she's got to figure out his love and his sacrifice, right? And that'll happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a matter of time. I'm going to sit down. My feet are killing me. I haven't played basketball for a second. Shut it off. Yeah, it, it is. Absolutely. And here's the other thing. What about, um, oh, the cameras are all like, I'm on a table. Yeah. Sorry, you guys like to look at the globe anyway, right? Yeah. 
shrapnel? Okay. Well, we'll figure this out. All right. <laughs> so anyway, this is not going to work. Where was I? This little thing's fall apart. The power's going out, the clips are going out, my hard drive crashed yesterday, the external drive crashed. It's beautiful. You're not going to fix this mic unless you've got super good. That's all good. All right, so I feel like I'm a, feel like I'm a uh, lounge singer now. <laughs> got the fireplace, got the cool carpet. Who dialed in? Guy and seats, yeah. Everybody moving together. All right, does anybody know any show tunes? Oh, yeah. So, so when we bring it up and we do this, we have to realize that, okay, we're, we're waking up to something here. What's the purpose of this? Why? We say the truth. And what was that last part of your question? Sorry when that happened. No, I just want to make a point that, you know, you know, basically for a lot of people, what's going to cause them to really sober up quickly yeah. about the truth, about looking at things, and it's going to really call people to pause when they say, wait a minute, this is what it is. Yes. And, that, and that's been a lie. Why possibly we're not supposed to keep the commandments? Could be a lie. You know, I mean, I know a lot of people who don't believe that. I don't believe that we need that. Well, there's only two now. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I, I mean, I kind of had a crisis of faith when I started looking at the flat earth that a friend was just said, Have you ever faced those might be a flat earth and I was like, No, and, you know. They, they, they asked you if there they might be a me. fake flat earth? No, a real flat earth. They were. They were oh.
babies and have children with the women. And I was floored because I did not think that my mamma was going to say that. <laughs> and I asked her, I said, well, wait a minute. How do you know this? How did you hear this? How come I've never heard you talk about this? And this is what was said to me. And this is how many times you've heard a pastor say this. Well, now, honey, that's not something we need to talk about. Well, it's it's almost, I think, that most people, because you don't get a degree in something, you're not allowed to speak about it. That's how we've been trained. That's the white coat syndrome. Yeah. That's just, yeah, ooh, don't do that. Just like going into a bar, what do they say? When you go into a bar, I hope none of us are going into bars and hanging out there a lot, but, you know, if you're getting there, you're going to get cheaper, I don't blame them. But I'm just saying, if, if, if you go into a bar, what are the things they say you can't talk about in a bar? Yeah. And, and, and there's a reason why. I honestly believe there's a reason why. Obviously, can people can start fighting real quick under the influence. But at the same time, they don't want people in groups talking together. I mean, obviously, yes, it can cause problems. You're going to have the left and the right. You're going to have believers and non-believers in that same group. But you're not even allowed to do that in the library. It's not just at a bar. Try and sit, try and have a conversation about this at the post office about politics and religion. It's gonna, it's gonna get heated real quick, and I believe it's gonna get heated real quick because the love is waxing cold. We can't have civil conversations anymore. You know, and there's there's been static here, and I hope it's all been resolved. But even here, amongst some of the, the speakers, I've I've seen it. Some of you have witnessed it. People have heard people talking about it under the ground. It is what it is. That's part of the struggle. So, in this struggle, when my, when my grandma told me about the, the, the angels and this and that, I, I said, well, how come you never told this to me or any of this of us kids? I mean, she was behind well, you knew about David and Goliath. I'm like, yeah, but I wasn't really told a whole lot about his brothers. <laughs> I wasn't really told about the Canaanites, like how big they really were and what could the possibilities be that these things were not what we were told. Like, when I was first introduced to that, from what I remember, you know, they're going to go into this land and you're going to destroy everything. I always thought, that's, man, that's kind of mean. Well, it makes a lot more sense when you find out what's well, genetically you need to, or, you know, it's going to get ugly again if it was. So, as we continue on and we go down this, this, this path of trying to struggle and find our way through this, through this map, and, and then, oh, and real quick, my mamma, what she told me was this, they quit preaching this. I said, well, what did they, did, when did you learn this? How did you learn this? She said, well, they used to teach it. I said, they used to teach about the Nephilim, and about the giants, and about the angels? And she said, oh, yeah. I said, when? And she sat there, and she was, well, it's probably, probably 70 years ago. 70 years ago, way before my time, that they quit talking about Giants no, or Nephilim. Is that I mean, you know, most people's Bibles in the Old Testament is based on you know, what they call the Masoretic text? Yes. So if you have a Septuagint based Bible, based on the Septuagint, you'll notice it says things that are completely different than what you're normally used to, King James Version or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's lots more giants, lots more references to giants in the Septuagint version. So I recommend if you have never read a Septuagint version based on translation, you should probably start doing that. And just compare them. You know, apples to oranges and say, wow, which, you know, and ask the Father which one of these is true. They'll tell you. It gives you better discernment, oh, too. It really does. So that's, yeah, yeah, good point. And I think that's the, the biggest thing is a lot of us will say, well, I've already read the Bible. I'll read that version. <laughs> How can we test things if we do that? And I'm not, and I'm guilty of it, too. I don't take a bunch of Bibles out and do that. I'm, I do a lot of my stuff in prayer. And um, for those of you who were here yesterday, if you saw what happened when this whole flat earth thing came up, I literally had lightning strike in front of my house right after I started making a video because of you know, a whole process of asking God where a notebook from 1984 shows up with all these papers that I wanted to see sometime, you know, just to compare, with, what did I learn? How did I learn this? I don't remember exactly what was said. I just want to see it. This folder shows up. Man. And I was so surprised about the folder showing up that I actually grabbed my phone to make the video about it and walked. And I said in the video, I said, I've been asking God about confirmation. I was kind of like, you know, 
I'm making a video about this, can't make a video about this. But I'm gonna make a video about this because I can't deny this notebook shows up in a shoebox from back in the 90s. And it looks like it came out of my locker in 1984. And the first page, when I flip it open, it was about maps and globes and how you, you know, do all the measurements. And so all of a sudden, I had the very first question, I said, what were the, it was like, what were the early ideas about the shape of the earth? And I said, in my own writing, it was flat. And right when my lips uttered in flat, lightning struck in front of my eyes. And there wasn't a cloud in the sky. We had the nasty chem drawings, but it wasn't like a thunderhead or anything like that. We got a thunderstorm about six hours later that night. So I don't know lightning striking that far away. I've heard you can do three miles up to three miles, maybe up to 10 miles of the water. But, but it, yeah, so I believe that God, when we go to heaven in spirit, we have a childlike heart and we go in complete humility, it helps the struggle out. So once again, we are, here we are, we're talking about the struggle and the solution about flat earth. So now let's move into, let's go into more flatter. So I've already explained to you guys that I've already had this, this issue with finding out things that were taught to even my own family members, you know, two generations ahead of me, that now they don't teach it in the, in the, in the Bible, in the uh, churches. They don't talk about it because those are some things that we don't need to talk about. We just need to talk about Jesus. And I, how many of you heard that? You just need to talk about Jesus. You just need to talk about the love of Jesus. Okay. Has that ever worked for you in the world? Going up to somebody you don't know to witness, has it ever helped? And I, I'm taking that away, but there's a reason why some of these things, when he says, be learners and to test all things, if we're not supposed to know these things and to battle these things and to battle the schemes of our adversary and battle the, 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 uh, the ways of the devil, if we're not doing these things, if we're not as wise as the serpent, how can we take on the adversary to the lost? By our lifestyle. I witness more by how I live. How you live, yeah. yeah. Because everything I talk about is scripture. You yeah. get a new employee, and that's oh. what they're going to hear that day when they're riding the truck with me, you know, and I'll tell them right up front. And this is what I talk about, this is what my life is. If I get too much, just tell me to shut up, I'll quit. You yeah. Know, I'm not wanting to. You know, bug the guy or so like with the first day that somebody gets in the truck with you, what, what do you do if I can ask? I, I tell them, I'm going to your company. Okay, so you're, you're going from one place to another. Yeah. So when they get in the truck and they shut the door, you're driving, right? Yeah. So they shut the door. When they shut the door, you look at them and go, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> the earth is flat. The what? giants are coming back. <laughs> Jesus loves you. And Jesus loves you. Yes, I know. You know why? The Bible tells me so. It does tell me so. But it, and I'm, like, I'm not making light. I just that it's funny because I can see the guy going, Whoa. "Oh man!" I was preaching to my daughter about the flat earth. She just heard me talk about it because I had learned stuff about it. Once I learned enough, then I started telling my brother and different things. Can you guys hear? He said one. Okay. Yeah, so right. once I once I learned enough, and then I was actually telling some family members about it, she heard it, and I found out later she was researching about her own. She was doing it. Yeah. I didn't know that until she came back to me. And she goes, "Oh yeah, I believe it's flat." Like, yeah. When? When did you hear it? Like I didn't even know. How come you didn't see anything? Well, I didn't know how you did. It was just no. how I. That's how I live my life. Yeah. I talk about what I believe. Well, there's nothing better than you, you discover that somebody else has a love for truth, and they've been searching diligently on their own. That you haven't had to feed them, you haven't had to give them the glass of water, they've been going to get it themselves. You know, they always say, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you know what? All right, have, you ever, have you ever tied a rope around a jackass's neck and tried leading him anywhere? A burro, you know, a, a stubborn donkey. When I say jackass, I don't mean that in a bad way. I would call them jackasses, sorry. Uh, it's not, that's not a group of crazy guys on skateboards. <laughs> or off their skateboards. So, yeah, I, I look at it this way. We have to find a solution. And I truly believe that the, the best way of doing this is by going in complete humility. I really do. I've, I've done this now for a couple of years. And after that lightning strike, I didn't have to go out and do tests. I didn't need a test to prove anything. When God did that in front of me and my daughter, and, and the way that that happened, and I explained this yesterday, that, and you guys will have to watch it, I don't want to do the whole thing again, but when, 
when that day actually happened, I was actually on the phone with Rob Skiba, and he was going through a very troublesome time. And most of the static was coming from brothers and sisters, from people that you know proclaim the blood of Jesus, but yet they were coming, they were coming out of full swing with brass knuckles, you know, and uh, saying some of the worst of the worst, you know, he's just, you know, hypocrite, deceiver, you know, whatever it was. I mean, you can tell you he, he said before, and I, we don't need to rehash that. But when that happened, when you know, you know, you know, and I and I immediately when I put that video out there. The accusing spirit was so attached to that video, to those visuals, to that actually happening, that immediately I was accused of working for the devil. Then I had to dance with the, the, the devil dancing with the light in a roundabout way. That I was going to be the person that was going to be deceiving so many people. And that, you know, you better be careful. You better be careful now. Why? Because Satan falls, I think, you know, like lightning from the heights or from the heavens. So I'm like, okay, well, wait a second. What else does the Bible say about lightning? So I went and looked at all these verses up. I'm like, oh, let me send some of these verses back to you. <laughs> That's right. I'm like, so which one is it? Oh, okay. and then you know what I got back? Touche. <laughs> like, I'm not looking for a sword fight. That's the whole thing. I'm just using this as a sword, and it's kind of deep. So, and I said this before, if, if, our, if our tongue is a sword, what's going to happen when you cut somebody? Are you going to come back and try and candy coat it? Now listen, the earth is flat, it says in the Bible, but you don't have to worry about it, it doesn't mean anything. You keep piling on, you go, no, it does matter. It is the truth. It shows the true creator's intention that we have a very intimate place and a dwelling place that he had us in mind, that we are the ones that he had in mind for this entire place. Why do you think Adam got, he was able to name all the animals? And if, and if there's any type of, yeah, if there's any type of randomness in other planets out here and out there, how does that really make you feel about God had you in mind the whole time that you're made in his image? I mean, think about it. It's the ultimate takeaway. That's what the heliocentric model does. I don't know what the stars, how they move. I don't know how the sun stays up above us inside the firmament. I don't know how the moon does it. I don't have the readings of the, the charts of what frequency the light of the sun is compared to the moon, what it does during the solstices, how the drift works, all that. My job in all of this was, is it flat down here? Can we prove it? I already believe it. I already know it. I got confirmation. I know what it says in the scriptures. And one of the things, and this is where I'll go, because uh, how late am I supposed to go here, Mike? You know? Uh, four o'clock. Four o'clock? Okay, I got ten minutes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So we know there's going to be a struggle no matter what. Finding this out and trying to share it. I would honestly say I wouldn't make this your first conversation piece. We've all said that. We all know. It's just logic. It's the hardest pill for somebody to swallow. But bringing up creatively and talking about it, one of the things I've said is how intimate do you think God's creation is for us. How intimate is this place? And what have we done to it? We pretty much destroyed it to it from what it was. And we're good. It's going to keep getting worse until he arrives. So if we can go at it from a standpoint, I do I do believe this. We go at it from a standpoint of going, you know, it is a lot more intimate. And when you look out in space, some people say, you know, when they say space, I say, when you look at the stars and you're on a, a beach, and you look up, you can feel really small. But now, condense all that huge, big stuff into one intimate setting. You should feel you should feel small but special. Exactly right, because it is intimate. What's the name of this room right here? It's the cosmos. Yeah. It's the cosmos. Yeah. This is the most intimate setting in this whole. Yeah. Other than the beach chats, I mean, same idea. Yeah. Well, I think this is even more intimate than the beach chats because we have a fireplace. <laughs> hey. My name is Rick, I'm a square girl, I like long walks on the beach. I'm just kidding. I'm Mary. What's up, Fred? The only books I would check out at all in school were Facebook. Oh, yeah. I dream of going out there, you know, and I look up the stars and I get sad because I, I never get to go to school with that stuff. And, you know, with my life going the way it was going, I would never get to explore anything. Well, then 
trying to look at it. How many of you believe that the angels are the stars? So now you're like, well, I, I, you definitely can't go there if you're getting a piggyback right. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I know that God will know. Exactly. I, I, I trust him. And he's proven himself over and over. I moved out of my apartment, I moved my place on April 11th, and I traveled and I tried my best to bring him to the side of the street. And he's proven himself over and over. Yeah, man. And I still doubt him. We all do. We all do. I, I think we all do. It's I just get so frustrated. Bad. Like, what's up, Ezra, uh, the prophet that, you know, the, 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 the butter barrels of water and God takes him and sacrificed and he goes back and runs all the way freaking south because the. Uh, I can't think for him, Jezebel or whatever. Right, you know, I, 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 I didn't understand Isaiah. that. No, is, is that Isaiah? Elijah. Elijah. Yeah. yeah, so when you look at this, man, it's really, really it's humbling. So, the solution, this is where I was going with this. We can all run our mouths about something. But if we don't test it, and we just listen to what somebody else has given us that we've been tested on by their academia and we don't challenge the world if we don't take on the world there's not going to be a solution there won't be a solution well part of that too is, is testing testing the goal of ourselves that's right one of, one of the things my brother asked me when i was presenting this stuff to him he's like well what have you done what have you done and all i can at first come back with is well i seen this video he's exactly like, yeah but videos can be doctored so what you know I'll tell you the, the one of the solutions that got me, and I, I'll never forget this. I was it was so awesome. I was like, yes. I was uh, in Indi northern Indiana. We're right off uh, Lake Michigan, so we get some really good winters. Probably do here too, right off of Great Lake. But we um, we play cornhole sometimes in a, in a heated barn. You know, I mean, it gets dark at 4:30 in the afternoon. I mean, you go nuts. You know, you're living in a cave and you're driving outside. That's what's going on? So we were, we were playing cornhole one night. Some of the guys I run around with every now and then and do that stuff with, you know, they're not walking the walk. They're not talking the talk, but I still love them. And, you know, they're pretty good cornhole players, so it's game on. Because cornhole is the new, is the new uh, sport, right? That's a serious game. It can be. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, it gets you ready for the 4th and 4 County Fair. Yeah. Um, so you can win. Stop jamming. It you, keeps your arm loose. So no, but, but basically what it is is that here's a, here's one of the guys. He he he, he comes in, and I've been there for you know probably an hour. But he walks in and he's like, oh yeah, Homer, hey man, where's your tin foil? He goes, where's your aluminum hat? Your aluminum foil hat? And I looked at him. I said, you know what, man, you are so stupid. <laughs> and he goes, what what's that supposed to be? Like, you're really dumb. You really are. And I kept a real serious face. Well, you're really stupid. What are we talking about? I go, it's not aluminum, it's tin foil, man. You can't wear aluminum foil, it doesn't work. <laughs> broke the guy, she's like, oh, man, I thought you were really mad at me. I go, no, no. I mean, you really are, if you're going to come at me, I mean, at least kind of you know, know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, So right away, he's like, oh, man. I said, but what if I showed you something? I said, I said, is the moon out when you got here? Was it still out? And he goes, yeah. I said, all right. We had fresh snow on the ground. It was like 22 degrees out that day, that night. I said, well, what if I showed you I could prove to you something? I proved to you that the Bible in Genesis, I can prove it right now, man. Here's how you gotta do that. Well, go grab the uh, laser pointer over here, the laser thermometer you got. What are you gonna do? Go just come on, man. Keep your coat on. What are you doing here, man? Go just come on. <laughs> I'm not gonna point your eyes. I'm not trying to get you outside because I'm mad at you. He goes, well, what, what are we doing? I said, all right. Here, before we go outside, let me ask you something. I said, do you understand what it says about when God created the uh, the, the moon and the sun. What it says, and he says, no. So he put two lights in the sky. One to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. What's the word lesser mean? It means to take the norm and go negative. Right? So the moon is the negative light. So he went outside, just point the light on the snow in that shadow of that tree. So he does it. I said, would you agree to me that the snow is the same temperature? Absolutely. I said, so now what we're doing, this laser is going to be measuring the light. That's the only difference. There's one's in the shade, one's in the light. So yeah. I said, now, before you do that, I said, put your, take your glove off real quick and put your hand out in the moonlight. Can you see all five of the digits on your finger in the moonlight? Shadow. Yeah. 
Tell me how that works on reflected light off of dust. The only way you can get that is off of the mirror, unless it's a direct light, because it's creating a five or five digits. You can even see the ring on his fingers on the stone. He's like, I never thought of that. I'm like, that's the, the only way you can do that is a, that's a direct light. He's like, huh. I go, now to put the thermometer in there. Now I'm going to show you the lesser light. So he put it in the shade. I think it came out to like, I think it's just, I don't know, probably around 18 or 19. When I put it into the moonlight, it was like 13 degrees. It was, it was six degrees difference that night. And I've done it before where I only get three degrees or five degrees or this or that. But he ended up getting all of it. So he, when he went in, he just looked at me, gave me that deer in headlights look like, oh my gosh, what just happened? What just happened to me? He goes, dude, that's, what'd you just do to me? I said, no, <laughs> that is God doing that to me. Because you just got humbled. I said, now, I said, you want me to make you a tinfoil hat or a woman hat? Which one do you want? Tinfoil, yeah. So, I do believe this, this is the solution in all this. There's a struggle and there's a solution. The solution is this. You go into it with complete humility, no matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. If you don't go into it with complete humility, you've got a sense of pride. And what blinds you? Pride can blind you. It can stop your heart from wanting to know the truth, to know the answers. You'll immediately go back to the intellect and what you think you know better than you do. You'll think you know reality better than, than what God made. And God will allow you to be fooled. I do believe that. Over and over in scripture, it says in the last days that people are going to forget about what his word says. They're not going to care. The love will wax cold for the truth. The love will wax cold of many. It will it'll go across the board. That even the very elect can be deceived. But if the elect are not willing to look and stay humble in his word and in the spirit, he will allow them not to be able to see and hear the truth. I believe that. Come right there. Now, what is the solution? Remind those that have never done a test that are speaking out on a matter that won't listen, that aren't humble about it. Remind them that it's probably better that they would be humble and, com and completely honest with themselves that do you really know? How many times have you heard, well, we've been to the moon. We know this because we've been to the moon. How many times have you heard somebody say that? That's a lot of people that have been to the moon. If everybody says we've been to the moon, <laughs> were you on the rocket? <laughs> were you there? Were you standing on the dust? Were you kicking the dust around? I mean, this is this is the type of stuff that, that's happened. And we say this, and loosely, we, it's like, yeah. you have to bring that, lift that veil. And the veil is, you've got to make them realize that it's, it's time to bring out the humility. And not that you want to humiliate the person, but you want them to understand, look, it's like what Rob said, uh, Skiba said this, um, up in Canada, he said the other night, we were you once. We were you once. We came through the same system that you came through. You know, I've had guys that, you know, that, that would say stuff to me and say, oh, you're stupid, you're this or that. I'm like, wait a minute, I got better grades than you did in this class. <laughs> I remember, you used to cheat off my paper. And of course, I would cheat off your paper in the other class, but it was a we, we were good part. So the solution is this, plainness of speech, do the small test, like you said, you got your tests off of YouTube. A $10 laser thermometer can do some things. A level can do some things. But the other thing is too, water is a natural level, guys. Water is a natural level. I don't care how big the pond is, I don't care how small the bowl is. If there's surface tension, you can get a bow. You can. But there's a reason why there's river banks. There's a reason why there's shores on the ocean and on this lake out here. So, on that note, if there's, you had a question. Well, about the scripture you said about the elect being deceived. Yes. And it's often quoted out of context to the message of the opposite. It's if it were possible, possible, it's not possible. If they're deceived, they're not elect. If they're in a strong illusion, their love is grown cold, and Yahweh's the one that gives them a strong illusion. That's right. That. He says, I'll bring it. Yeah, so the elect can't be deceived. If you're, you know, if you're deceived or you're walking in deception or walking in lawlessness, you're not part of the elect. Well, the other thing in that is, too, is if you're prideful, right? he's going to let you take a butt kick. <laughs> I believe that. He chastises those that he loves. Sure. 
So there you go. Not, you're not his. He searches for a sign. He was that? He searches for a sign. Yes. Yes. Show him a sign. Yes. Show him a sign. You guys hear? Him? I'll tell you this much: if all this is a lie and we live on a ball, this lie has produced more and sweeter fruit in me than any truth ever has. That's in right. Life. That's right. <laughs> and I will take the lie. Yeah. Well, it's not a lie. Right. And here's the thing: when you look at all these people that have come forward. I can tell you, Robbie Davidson, Rob Skiba, um, I think Jared uh, Cressman, I think, what was it, Jared I was talking to? These guys, have, they, there's there's testimony after testimony. Even me, in my own life, I've got people that will come up to me, they don't want to be known. And the reason why they want to be known is because of the struggle. And they haven't gotten to the solution yet. The solution is, tell the truth, use a plainness of speech, do it in complete humility, plant the seed, but back it up. And that's what we're doing. I truly believe that's what we're all doing. I think that's why Robbie's got the Scientism Exposed thing going. I think that's why skiba has got the test in the globe.com. That's why I've been involved with certain guys here and there. I think that's why we're all here. And like what we were saying before we even started this, there are people that are doing meetups. We were talking about doing meetups in, in Cleveland with, with uh, Chris and Mike and all the guys. Sooner or later, I guarantee you, some of you will be leading circles in conversation if you're not already. I do believe that. You're not here. I don't believe that we're all here by accident. I will get this fly sooner or later. <laughs> Robbie, you guys are supposed to start right at four. Four ten. Four ten. Okay. So, is there any? It's five minutes slow. Though. That was five minutes slow, so it is four ten. Four away. Okay, we're just we're kind of wrapping up right now. We just okay. So, I mean, I have this till four ten, man. <laughs> so, do you guys? Is there any other questions? Anything else you guys want to add? Is there anything else? Because we're all, this is all a learning stage. None of us are experts on this, man. I'm telling you. None of us are experts on this. It's all of us next. Huh? It's all of us next. Yes. And we, this is the Flat Earth All Star cast is next, right? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. question. Yeah, brother. I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Wandering stars, I believe, are angels that are not keeping, uh, that have left their estate. Falling. 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 Is that like a comet? If you look up and see a comet, it's not really a star, it's actually a Well, what I would say is I don't believe that the angels are demons. I believe that fallen, the angels that aren't keeping their estate, think about every single quote unquote wandering star, we call them planets. What are their names? Mercury, demigod. Venus, demigod. Earth, and that even in itself is a joke because it's called Earth, and Earth means dirt. If we're getting the water in the air. So we're not even calling ourselves the true name. But then you got Mars, demigod. The list goes on. Why are any of those named Yahuwah? Why are any of those named Moses? Why are any of those named Ezekiel? Why all these names of these false gods? Because they're they want to they want to be worshipped like the Most High. It's very esoteric when you get down to it. When you understand the esoteric nature of it, and understand the the if they came down and, and they presented themselves as bigger and better than what man is, but yet we could be like them. Think about the mind game that's going on. You get mind shamed right away. Well, what is what is a meteor? We we actually no no really no there's 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 a um, there's a museum near my house and that's what this guy specializes in. He goes all over and gets meteorites and fulgurites. You know that's the lightning strike in the sand. He digs them out and he can, he can try and place them back together. You know so you can see what a lightning strike looks like in the sand. He finally admitted to me that he just puts things together and makes it look like lightning. They admit it to me. So they're not going to get fulgurites in shape. They actually dig these pieces up and they, they reassemble them however they go and they, they never have the real true fulgurite by the time they get back home. But what is a meteorite? A meteorite, you can actually find these pieces. And when you see a meteorite, now I wish I had the graphics, but if you had the meteorite, some meteorites have a pattern, a geometric pattern when you do the slices, when they cut these things. It's not like a normal rock where you got a little bit of sediment here and a little dot here. You're talking about literally, mathematically, geometric shapes with inside that that I truly believe the meteorites could actually be part of the planet. 
And if it's not part of the permit, there's, and Ezekiel talks about chariots, right? Okay, so what are the chariots? Is that is that really like a, a we, I mean, do you, get the, do you get the vision of a chariot going across the sky? There's a couple horses that got on a whip going, yeah, you know, and it's flying around in a vertical. I mean, th this is the type of stuff that we have to get to the nature. Who is Satan? He is the prince of, prince of the air, right? Yeah, Satan is called the prince of the air. And, and if that's the case, if he's up there and that's his dwelling place and he's doing things, and he's allowed to give lying signs and wonders, you know, a lot of people say, well, how do they know when the meteor showers are going to happen? I touched base on this yesterday. How are scientists able to, to predict when these meteorites are happening? The meteor showers. How? Okay, well, here's the thing. If Satan, this is my, this is my theory, and this is by using scripture and, and looking at a pattern, if Satan is the prince of the air, and if Satan is the same one that tempted our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the desert, okay, and he said to me, or he said to him, he said, if you will just bow to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth to, to rule, right? Jesus didn't take the bait, but other men have. Right? So other men have taken the bait. So if, if Satan is still the prince of the air, now he's not locked up in hell yet. He's not down there with his pitchfork and a little you know, fire behind him. And he, 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 he. He's out here going, no, go ahead and do this. I got your back. I get you. He's seducing men to this day. I would have to say that if he's in cahoots with men that are ruling over men using principalities and other things to do so, I have a feeling that he would share the information that needed to be shared so that they would know when these meteor showers are to keep the narrative alive, that we are on a ball spinning out of control, you know, somehow out of control, but somehow uniform. Because when I was in school, the very first thing they said was the sun was here, just here, and we were all just going around it. Never did I hear in school that we were traveling through and we were corkscrewing behind it. Now that's one of the official narratives. That's why you have Neil deGrasse Tyson saying, you know, in one in one sentence, it's it's such, such a perfect sphere. And then the next time you'll hear him saying it's, it's more pure shape, it's more oblique. They, they, it's a fourth tongue. Yeah, right. See, it's on the logo of NASA. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this is what I'm saying. We got to use a little bit of logic here. And we can get lost in the shuffle and say, well, I believe this Bible verse means this, or this Bible verse means that. No, go to it in spirit. Go to it and test all things, physically and spiritually. But do it with humility, but also don't be afraid to speak the truth. The real solution here, and this is what I was getting, through all the struggle, the solution is know who the authority is and stand on it. That's the solution to all of it. Not just flat earth, and that was my whole point. Not just flat earth, but anything. Flat earth is one thing, but... The truth is all of it. And so it is important. And I do believe that. I think the struggle and the solution are, are so intertwined together that you have to understand the solution is already there. It's been there all along. Because it started with him. And the struggle is something that we are guaranteed to have because it's not promised to be easy through any of this. So in order to share the true nature of creation with of, 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 of you know, the cosmos, whatever that is, the bottom line is, if we're talking about flat earth, why is it that we can't stick to the ground? Why is it that every time we talk about flat earth, they always point up? But you have the satellites, you have it this, you have it that. But the, but the sun's doing this, we can't figure this out. Stop, I'm talking about down here. Stay on point. Water's a natural level. Water's a natural level. Period. No other way around it. And if that hurts somebody's feelings because you're using your tongue, do not pack that wound with cotton candy. Pour on the salt. Rub it in.